Welcome to the Interchange Design Course Week 1. First of all, I would like to start by congratulating you upon having made this decision. Junction design is a crucial element of civil engineering and highway design. Now the junction you're looking at right now may seem complicated. I mean, there's so many things. There are arrows, um, there are zebra crossings, there are cycling lanes, there are turning radiuses and all. When you look at this junction, it looks complicated. What I can assure you, by the end of the, this course, you will be able to create something like that with ease. The goal again of the course is to make sure you understand the basics, which is the goal of the first week. The moment you understand the basics, creating more complex junctions becomes an easier option. So, when you take on this course, there are exercise files that are shared with you based on the lessons, and also there's Suppl supplementary content that's shared as a result of the course. Now, just as for the intro, what are we going to be looking at? So first of all, there are a number of things. One, we are going to start with the types of junctions. What are the different types of junctions and what should be the consideration? We then, we go to how do you align junctions? Sometimes find junctions are staggered. Or sometimes you find they're aligned at very astute angles. What do we do with that? Then we go to the standards. What standards are we going to use when we are designing these junctions? The IRC, the AASHTO, and most of the African manuals plus the Australian manual. From there, we are then going to start looking at all the small attributes and factors. For example here, how do we design the storage length? How do we design the perception distance um, that allows drivers to perceive that there's going to be a junction in that area? And how do we design for dedicated left turns? How do we design for these right turns? What are some of the factors we consider? For example, in this case, you're going to see, we look at things like the turning radius. How do we design for left turns? Islands and the splitters. So these islands, how do we design for them? Why are they tapered in this way? Why isn't this island straight? And for example, here you can see this island is curved. Is there any reason why it's curved like that? What's the offset from the zebra crossing that uh, cars should stop based on the stop line? Now these are all things we're going to talk about. We'll also talk about in cases where it's much more complicated like the case studies of railway crossing, speed lane changes. Now the number of design considerations and these are just in summary. So if I just to look at them you find that one we always look for the human factor Okay, this is normally the driving habits, the decisions, and the reaction time. We look at the traffic consideration. Now, this course is not a traffic course. So, on Highway Academy, you can find another course for traffic, which is traffic design for junctions. That's why we design signals and we also look at the level of service. So, we'll be using data from that course to design this junction. We then go to other elements which are physical, so these are alignments, side distances, we shall look at how to make a junction safe, the crosswalks, which are the walkways, and we shall hit a bit on lighting. Lighting is also another course on Highway Academy where you can look at how to design lighting for junctions. We look at everything from a professional perspective using standard manuals that talk about what's the lux you can use, why do we put in lighting poles to make sure they're safe. And then finally, we'll hint a bit on the economic factors, which is the energy consumption. We talk about this in the lighting course, where you can calculate how much a junction will use. That's a problem I face currently right now at the authority, where you have to understand how much a junction will use in terms of lighting. So that as you're preparing the operational budget, everyone's aware. And I hope by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to create something like this with AIDS. So I hope to see you in the next lesson. Thanks for tuning in.